You think you know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you're sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was? Before I was me, I was you. You man score 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. What's up, Square Pimp Gang? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, this is a special show. Now, I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time I mean it. I really mean it. Harry, what's going on? You ready to rock and roll? Oh, you know goddamn well I am. You okay. know goddamn well I'm trying to keep these gators down, and I'm having a it's, tough time doing it. It's difficult. It's not easy. It's not easy. Pimping ain't easy. It gets better with practice. Dre, what's up? What's up, pals? Did you smoke yet? No? You didn't smoke yet? <laughs> Not yet. All right, well, go get you a bag of weed. <laughs> go get at a bag of vapor. At this point, Dre has to just take a balloon and tie his head around it with the weed in it. <laughs> they that come up with a weed balloon, I am in there. You have a weed balloon. You just call it volcano. Yeah, but I the... can't fit inside of it. Oh, I see what it is. You need you like know, a weed body bag. That's really, a, <laughs> that's really a problem. If that's like what you're concerned, weed ha- hamster wheel. We got it. We got it. Shit? We already got it. We already got it. When we all is... think, we're all thinking you got a problem. That's <laughs> what we're all thinking. Dre is just gonna show up. He's gonna have a what we think is a hair dryer, just drying his hair. Like, hey, Dre, what's up? Oh, this thing. He's, ga- he's gonna have a gas mask. Yeah, I'm gonna be up to the I, I, I just love when you were murdering that intro. You killed it, by the way, right? <clears throat> Dre was in the spirit. He was mouthing off, just calling to the spirits of his Jamaican hip hop ancestors, just trying to <laughs> get <laughs> it. Just, you know. Uh, anytime <laughs> you ask Dre, you ask Dre something he don't know, he just starts bogling. <laughs> like, what is that? Man, never knew that. <laughs> anyway, let me ma- let me introduce the guest. This dude's a really good dude. I've been wa- I wanted to say this. I appreciate your your compliment early because I've been watching you uh, for a while. I just sit back in the back and I was like, yo, this is a funny dude. So we knew each other, but we didn't know each other, know each other, and then we had a little thing since the COVID. Had a little conversation. I was in your publicist hit up, hit me up and was like, "Yo, uh, uh, TJ wants to get on," and I was like, "Yeah, like absolutely." In fact, we talked when we saw each other about doing the show, and but there was something about I didn't want to talk to your publicist. I was I don't know if they she told you what I said. I was like, "Yo, tell her nigga to give me my call, give me give me my yeah. number." They told me nothing. Like Harry reached out to me, so it's perfect. It's done the organic way. I didn't right, even know they reached said, out to I you. I said, Harry, I wanted to have you on, mm-hmm. but I hit your publicist up, and I was like, Yo, give him my number and tell him to call me. I'm, I, I didn't want it to be. I hear you. Remove the middleman because we had, and the thing is, it's because we had that. Because you know, I knew it was all respect, but we never sat down and talked. right, 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 right. And then we had that moment at Isville, so it feels like. There's one less degree of separation. Like, and the this thing, is a the cool thing was, what's honest is I didn't want to contact you because I didn't want it to be like you hit me up and, and your publicist hit me up and I'm like, ah, we, you know, we usually give courtesy like that. I really wanted you to know that I wanted you on. You know what I'm Thank saying? You. I, I, Thank I you. personally I wanted you on. And, I, and Harry hit you because I said, yo, let's get TJ on the show and that kind of how it happened. So and I was they, like, yeah, yeah it's cool with me. He you could didn't come say on. nothing. We didn't and that's how you got on because I was like, yeah, he good in the hood. You can let him in. 
Dre is my Welcome. dude. Dre is my dude. So I oh, but before we start, I want to say sac passé. Naboule, baby. Naboule. Naboule. What is that response, Naboule? It's basically, there's no real way to trans. It's such a Haitian idiom. It's basically, we're kicking it. We're doing all right. We're doing our thing. Like, ah, ha, ha, like, ah, ha. Yeah, yeah, it's that and, kind of thing. And what's mon PPT? Is there something that says after that? Somebody, cause, uh, I have a Haitian friend who used to say that after. It's, it's, it's more of a... Wait, what's my, the enunciation of it? Mon, mon PPT? No. What is it? it? I don't even know exactly, like, I know what you're saying based on what it sounds like, but I don't yeah. know exactly what you're saying. Does so that what's the sense? response? If you say Sakose and I say Nabule, what would you say back? I could say Nabule, or I could add a couple of things. I could say Nabule Neg Bam, which is, we're good, my dude. Okay. Or Mon PT, that sounds like my little dude. That's sort of a thing. Oh, okay, say. okay. PT is like the French word pretty, which is How do you small, say it? Mon so say, How do you say it? Mon Petit. Mon Petit. I got it. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Ah, he was calling you a little nigga, Dante. Which is strange. <laughs> Dante's big as a motherfucker. He was, he was an old. He was an old nigga. He was an old. Ah, oh, oh, okay. He, he OG. would do that. Uh, an yeah, older yeah. would do that. Yeah. Yeah, he was an older dude than it, me. It's my, my yeah, because in, in his head, it's not even a size yeah, thing. It's an sense. age. It's an age. Egg. Okay, I'm good now. Uh, That's what I yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good, Dunk it man. It's good to have you on, bro. It's good to have you on. Thank you. Um, how you holding up with all this COVID shit? I'm all right, man. Right now, I'm feeling real good because I'm in uh, travel to North Carolina to be with some of my uh, Haitian high school friends. Oh, yeah. Just a little get together. Mm. Like, I try to get out of New York every six months or so, but because of COVID, I couldn't do it this year. So I finally was like, you know what? I don't want to spend Christmas here doing nothing. So let me right. go and recharge. For me, it kind of feels like that. I, whenever I'm around Haitians, like, I'm recharging my batteries. Yeah. I yeah. That. Okay. All right. Um, have you been doing shows on the roofs and shit? I mean, we we did a little super spreader together. A couple we did. Months ago. <laughs> we did. I don't feel bad about that because it hasn't come back to me yet that anyone got COVID from those Isville shows. So I'm happy with that. Okay. I'm good. And uh, I did a couple of rooftops and a couple of Prospect Park joints, and then mm. it's mostly on Zoom. Yeah. How was yeah. the Prospect Park joints? That was actually pretty cool, man. The audience that was there, I just lucked out. I got a good crowd that wanted to hear stand up. And like the funny thing it. about it is, uh, a did they have comedian. a PA, did they have a PA system or was it just yelling in? Yeah, the... yeah, they brought a little generator okay. and they brought a little PA okay. system, so that helped out. Yeah, I feel it, like a uh, lot of those shows was like that. I feel like the audiences. Especially in the parks, was just like super appreciative. They yeah, I think people was beat up. No they were so beat up no from not having nothing, not. and they wanted some kind of entertainment. There was a couple shows I did with no PA system, and that shit was fun than a motherfucker. Mm. Yeah, you it know, I think COVID time. may have made me realize that entertainment is a need. Is it? Is essential? It's Nigga, a we need. Are yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. Especially when you live in America where so much of your life is around work. You're just trying to chase that paper, trying to get that money. Entertainment hey, is essential to your fucking soul, that's man. A fact, hey, TJ, so you, Art in general is so right. Like, TJ, people, during all this, the, you... The void uh, of no culture and people that have no art in them sucks. Mm. Yeah. You actually did a special during all this, right, Teach? I, I recorded this. Well, I did. It's not a COVID special. I got lucky. I recorded the special uh, January 3rd on 2020. Okay. So, so I right got before, lucky right before like things hit. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <sighs> so I was very lucky and I was very happy to do it. It's dope. Uh, at the time I did it, I self financed it, got, you know, some money from my homies and then. Didn't pay rent for a couple months. I was like, fuck my landlord. My dreams matter to me more than my rent. So hey, I it's my a pay, pay yourself first. Mm. That's right. That's right. So uh, it, it worked out. Uh, I like the finished product. And uh, the people at Comedy Dynamics came on board. They were like, yeah, we like this. Because since we did your album, so we'll distribute this for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was happy with the deal. So that's what we're doing. Cool. So cool. what's the name of the special? And uh, when is it coming out? The special is called January 3rd, and it's currently out on demand on Amazon Prime Video. But we're really pushing uh, the promotional stuff for it on January 3rd, because that's the day that it's supposed to officially come out. But right now, if you want, you can rent and uh, purchase it on Amazon Prime Video. 
Why is it called January 3rd, out of all things? Because, one, that's my birthday, and that's the night I happened to record it. Because I was thinking last year when it was, you know, normally I do a little get-together, have a party with friends, but I thought, let me take this and use it to my advantage because it's, it's hard to sell out two shows mm-hmm. as a comedian who doesn't have a name yet. Where'd, so you, where'd you do that? Where'd you shoot it at? I did it at uh, Little Field. Okay. So I said, instead of doing, you know, trying really hard to do two shows where like, let me just do one show and it's going to be my birthday show, which means more people would come out to support <laughs> me because it's my birthday. And I'll take a risk and record that one show and see what happens. And, and, and well, you, you were did. happy with it, yeah. The yeah, I'm pretty was, happy with it. The crowd yeah. was nice and juiced because it was your birthday. And yeah. The, so. the birthday helped, but you could feel it, though. Like, people were happy to be there because it's your birthday. Yeah, yeah. But Ten minutes in, they were like, all right, you better be fucking funny. I'm going to celebrate your fucking That's birthday, it. all right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, birthday or not, nobody laugh. wants to sit through your bullshit if you exactly. start. You still got to go to work. I've Listen, seen a that's, lot of that's people. New York stand-up, though. Yeah, that's not that's all right. stand-up. You go to L.A., if you got juice, they'll laugh you right okay. through your bullshit. Yeah, man. Have you ever hear the phrase, yeah. Dante, you ever hear the saying that uh, L.A. is the only town where you could die from encouragement? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's hilarious. So disingenuous. So fucking disingenuous. That's dope yeah. that you did that on your own, man. I really respect that a lot, that you were able to, you know, piece that together, record it, do the whole thing, and self-produce. Sure. Self, I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, it's, it's a mentality that I, I developed just because you can't wait for people to give you stuff in this business. You're right about that. Because you'll just die waiting. Yeah. Mm, that's true. It, it's just not how it works. So, so thanks, just, thanks for cheering us all up, yeah. though, TJ. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Hope you don't die I know, alone. Sorry, I didn't mean to make Wait, it. Down. You're, right, just, you're right, though. You're right. You're right. You're like, all right, do I feel like I have something good to offer? So that's t- the first step. Do you feel TJ, that does, way? Yeah, then try to make it yourself. Does mm-hmm. that mentality come from your upbringing, from your culture? Where does that like mindset come from? Yeah, I would say so. Uh, I, I came here when, when I was already kind of an adult. I came to this country when I was 18, 19 years old. So, you know, a lot of the formative years grew up in Haiti, different world, a lot, a lot of hardships. I, I saw shit that, you know, the average American kid probably didn't see. So all of that builds you up in a way where you're like, if I come here and I get a shot at doing something, I better fucking go hard because I'm lucky even just to be here. Yeah, quick, quick fact. The reason why Haiti is one of the poorest countries in the world is because France has been juicing them for money since they freed themselves and they had to pay a bounty for their own freedom after they after they freed themselves. Because white people. Man, we could do a whole (laughs) fucking series about that. Hold on. I'm sorry. Dre tried to throw a shot at that. I want to repeat this for people who aren't aware and you may not be aware. I am not, in fact, white. Uh, I understand that I sound like this. All right, let's clear this up. Like this. Are you Armenian? What are you? What's I am half Armenian, half Ecuadorian, which is Latino. Oh, okay. I don't do that Latinx bullshit. Caucasian. Just Latino. It's not. Stop it. Let's stop these rumors, man. <laughs> this is holding me back in life, in the business. You know what? You know what? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'll be running on board. Hey. Harry, let me tell you something. Even if you were white, fucking yeah. own that shit. Who gives a fuck? I'll You're not supposed not. to carry the sins of your ancestors. Just the way we're not carrying the sins or the, the whatever our ancestors went through. We don't really we don't really have sins. Wait, I can't hear you, Dante. You're off mic. We don't really yeah. have sins. We we were abused and, and oppressed. So there you go. everybody's got sins. But again, I just want to make that public service announcement. I am in fact not white. <laughs> Never have been white. Uh, don't plan Never on becoming white been. anytime soon. Thank you very I, much. Man, I want white people to be proud of being white. You know? Fuck That's for that. them. I don't know anything they, about listen, that. Listen, they do that. I'm you don't need to that ask lifestyle. for that. <laughs> TJ, you don't have to ask for that ever. Yeah. There's a lot of proud white people yeah. in the Lack world. Of pride is not the problem with white that people That is not right the now. problem at all. Yeah. There's a whole group called Proud uh, Boys. That is, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> proud of their whiteness. Trust me. You don't have, we don't have no fucking lack of that going on. And that, that's actually the problem. Oh, right. They're proud for nothing. They, they, you got mediocre, mediocre white folks that are proud of being you, white. You know what it is? You know what it is? I don't even think it's, I think part of the problem is that white people lost 
their individual thing, whatever cultural background they have, and then they all embrace this bullshit white thing, which is meaningless. Like, I love an Irish that's proud to be fucking Irish. Irish. Like, you got something to hold on to. That's where your people come from. That's your culture. You got all that shit going on. But when you say you're white, it's like, what the fuck is that even? It just means you're not black. I mean, that's really... Yeah, that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. That you're white. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it, that's what I'm it is. I'm not. Oh, pal. Yeah. Put her there, chief. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we 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 talk about that all the time. How this whole the whole referendum of this whole Trump and this racial bullshit is basically because he's 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 tricked them into thinking, well, you don't have jobs, you don't have fresh water, you don't have a home, you don't have no health care, but at least you're not black. At least you're yeah. not a nigga. And they're yeah. going, you know what? You got a point there, boy. You got a goddamn <laughs> point. So it, that's really what it is. But let me ask mm-hmm. you this. Uh, so what what part of Haiti did you grow up in? Where did you grow up? I, I grew up in uh, Gonaive, which is a town. That's the town, by the way, where the independence was declared. So it's a town of fucking rebels. We don't fuck around. Okay. And now, is there a remnants of feel of that in? in oh, in absolutely. That, absolutely. Really? Right. In what sense? Uh, that's monuments, and that's just a spirit of of pride and not oh, taking yeah. shit, which is cool. But like anything, when you take it too far, it becomes a problem. So does it become like a machismo thing, like a Spanish machismo thing, where you can't, you can't, there's no, no emotion, no sensitivity, because there's this, you're supposed to be, you know, that's the other end of that pride, you know. A little bit of that, but also even beyond that, what happens is Haitians have this mentality. If we're not happy with anything, we fucking burn the shit down. So sometimes you end up hurting your really, own... I don't really see a problem with that, but go ahead, continue. Here's the problem. <laughs> you have to Here's get the other shit, Dante, before you burn the original shit. Okay. You end up hurting yeah. your own cultural yeah. legacy, your own cultural yeah. wealth, because you're right. burning shit down that belongs to you as a people, but you're burning it down because you're mad at the people in charge, but you're also ruining your own country. Now you right. have nothing left. Right, if you don't, if you own it. If yeah, you own I mean, that, yeah. Haitians yeah. own the stuff in Haiti. So right, right, yeah, that, yeah that, I can see where that would be a problem. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's too extreme, and I wish we could sit down and dial it back to understand that now let me, you, let me ask you. Let me ask you this: the, uh, You grew up with both parents. I did. I was lucky enough to to have both my parents. Okay. Do they love each other still? Probably not, but they're still <laughs> around and doing their thing. So yeah, well, together? it's also a kind of a situation where at that age you just you get married. That's what you do. This is what we right, do. Right, right. I think like ten or twelve years or so ago, my mom was talking about getting a divorce, and we're all like, "Where the fuck you gonna go? <laughs> <laughs> you a Christian woman? You're not gonna date some young dude. That's not gonna happen. That's not, not who gonna you get are. her groove back." <laughs> <No>. <laughs> No, just would it. Yeah. How does that? How did that influence you growing? Like your parents, uh, in, in influence your relationships, your dating, your sexual lifestyle, all of that. You know what's funny? Uh, people talk a lot about how having two parents is better than having one, and on some levels, I think it is. But everybody is gonna get fucked up somehow by their family. doesn't matter if it's two people or one or three people. That's just how family works. For me, the good things about my family was they, they really valued education. My parents made sure you go to school. There, there, would, there would be books in the house, all of that stuff. Like, that's the, my dad never had money for anything. But as soon as you told them you need money for school, he would find a way to make it happen. Right, right. And I really love them for that because that gives you a sense of, this is the, the power I need to have in life. I need to mm. be like, I need to know stuff. I need to have a skill. I need to walk in a room and not feel like I'm less than because I can't talk in that room. Mm. So I really appreciate that. Mm. But then there's the other thing, which is kind of the negative side of being an immigrant where your parents kind of want to be proud of you, but they only want to be proud of you if you do Very what they funny. want yeah, you to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. They will, yeah. I, I want to tell my neighbors I have a doctor. Yeah. It's like, well, do you care if I want to be a doctor? Does that oh. matter to you? No. Nope. No, not at all. I just uh, want no. my neighbors to know nope. that I you made are a goddamn doctor. doctor. Right, right, right. So um, for me, right. For me going right. into this thing, 
was a heartbreak, man. My my mm-hmm. mother did not speak to me for three months. Really? Yeah. To this day, my so mother. So what was that? What was that conversation like? Well, I did not even get to have the conversation with her at first because I was saving it to be comfortable because I knew it would be a hard conversation. But my brother went around and told her. So he kind of stole that moment is, from me and she decided not to speak to me. This is exactly what people in this months. country go through when they're trying to come out of the closet. This is, <laughs> this, that's how <laughs> bad like, being I'm funny. Yeah, a, yeah, a non-doctor yeah, so It's a is. very similar thing. Wow. Like, I don't know if I, I don't know. Now, I was know your I'm brother funny. talking I don't about know if it? Phase or what? Was, was your brother talking about it? At, at, was he trying to tell on you to kind of create friction or was he proud of you and he talked about it or he didn't know that there was going to be a thing or what? I don't I don't think it was out of pride for me. I think he, I don't know if he was trying to create friction, but it's is your brother a hater? That's hard to say. Well, okay, I'll that's tell you. That, that, that that's, see, when you got to say that's hard to say, that's a yes. Yeah. That is I, a I'll tell you a story about my brother you. that I don't know if that makes him a hit or not. But my dad, you know, Caribbean dads, they cheat. My dad cheated. And my that's brother was the one who came and told my mom about it. <laughs> He's a snitch. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, yeah, he's the one. To this day, I feel like there's a unresolved tension between him and my dad because I would assume he's the so. one who told my he's mom. Fucking yeah. constantly ratting your own kid, <laughs> ratting on you. Yeah, so. yeah. good thing yeah. he wasn't around when they was trying to free Haiti. That nigga would have <laughs> from the country. So guess what uh, they getting to do tonight? <laughs> They're probably gonna do it at three o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, if you live around Will Sylvans long enough, you'll pick up some sort of Haitian will, accent. I'll tell I you grew, what. I grew, up around, I grew up around Haitians a lot. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a, it, it's what's interesting, too, is the just immigration, immigrants and first-generation immigrants in general, <clears throat> they're not interested in, in personal fulfillment and happiness. Like, that's their, oh. they're interested in survival, and, and education, survival, and so on and so forth. And so it's like that next generation where there's food on the table. You, you decide that there's more to it than just making your parents proud. And there's more to it than, than, than just doing what everybody else wants you to do. And you start this, you know, which is a really new concept. Um, it is. This kind of self-fulfillment. And, and then I think to a certain extent, um, now, I mean, the younger kids today, it's it's too much that. You know what I mean? There's no no real... Everybody uh, has a dream. All I have agree a dream with and, you. I agree yeah. with you 100%. I, it mm. feels like the balance has been lost. Yeah, yeah. Everything in life is all about balance. And there's the balance of the individual versus the collective. Right. And immigrants are 100% the collective fuck your dreams as an individual fuck your aspirations we don't want none of that just do what you need to do so the collective could be proud right 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 and so, now you have 100 percent the individual which is also a problem it's always a problem with no consideration for mm-hmm. anybody else or anything absolutely. that's right absolutely that's right. hey tj uh you're talking about your dad openly cheating and stuff like how did that affect you and the way you approach relationships and stuff just having that Damn, I didn't know this show was going to be a therapy session. God damn, this is... Huh. That's what it is. That's what I'm, we do. I'm, 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 this it's is like, great. This it's is like great. therapy, um, but openly smoking weed. That's the only problem. I, I think uh, on some level, it uh, made me afraid of emotional connection. Why? Well, how did you... How did you get to that? How did here's you where it stopped that becoming place? a therapy session. Uh, <laughs> never, you never want to hear that from your therapist. Oh, no, son, <laughs> how that make you feel? <clears throat> uh, so, all right. So the way it happened was, you know, when the cheating thing was happening, I was about 14, 15 years old. And there was a lot of arguing every night and it would get loud and my neighbors could hear it. And I'm, and I'm a pretty private dude. I don't like when people know what's going on in my house. So there was a lot of shame hanging out with my friends when I could tell, oh, did they fucking hear what my mom and dad were mm-hmm. arguing about last night? So that was, that was, it was icky. It was an icky, icky feeling. Yeah. And then later in life, I finally had a, 
conversation with my mother as an adult. Mm-hmm. And we were talking because she, she nags my father a lot. Right. And, and uh, we, I, I sat down. I'm like, I wanted to know, like, why do you always nag him so much? Like, you know, beyond the cheating. We're not even talking about that. Just as a human being to human being. Yeah, and yeah. She, goes, she goes, to tell you the truth, I never really loved your father. Wow. God damn. Damn, yeah, I wish she's honest about it, but fuck. Wow. Right. It is the kind of show you're like, oh, I wish I didn't know that. <laughs> and then, but what was, what was your response to that? I, I didn't really have, I don't think I was emotionally equipped to like respond to that. Really? She told me the story. He of, was only seven years old at the time. It might've been, <laughs> might've been way too there's soon. A, to there's a guy that she, she was like, I'm this many years old. She was like, I never loved your father. So, yeah. <laughs> now so open there's your a guy that gift. she was in love with. Uh-huh. Uh, and the dude ended up leaving Haiti. Uh-huh. And that's the guy of a dream. She was going to marry that guy. The right. guy left, and now she's, you know, by herself. And, you know, part of it is at that time, you had to settle down. And my dad was around, and she settled for my dad. Right. And I think to this day, a part of me, this is where the, the emotional, feel of emotional connection comes in. Like, right. I'm always afraid of settling. Okay. Wow, that's like, interesting. That's interesting that you looked at it from your mom's perspective and not your dad's perspective because I, I would think that your 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 well, aversion a version a version well no a version from intimacy could be gosh, I wouldn't want to be somebody that asked somebody to to marry them and they didn't they only married me because I was around. And you know, I yeah. mean it had to be some kind of courting and stuff. I mean, I, I don't. I, I mean, I don't know your dad, but I he had to. There explain. was some. There was definitely courting, but it just felt like I've never seen my parents kiss. I've never seen any of that. Really, I've never seen any outward display of affection. They just don't do that. And then part, I'm wondering if that's because she just couldn't bring herself to actually love him. She just has him as a husband, uh-huh. but it's not someone I'm excited to be with or just do stuff with. So. Maybe that played in my psyche. So now I, I get very, I get bored very easily with people. Yeah. Like I'll date a girl for three, four months. We have a good thing. And then as soon as it's time to like, maybe take it to that place, you know, like when women go, where's this going? Right. That's my least favorite question in the world. Like it's, it's, it's cool. We're chilling. I, yeah. Once you put that in my head, I'm almost out of the door. When you ask right. that, TJ goes, uh, I don't know where you're going, but I'm going that way. So <laughs> going to the Uber, bitch. Yeah. Oh, which, or more like, which way are you going? Cause I'm going the other way, wherever the fuck yeah. you go. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, it's interesting. I mean, did you ever talk to your father about this or no? No, not really. No. And are I, you close I, with I him or no? I want yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, we're close, but we're not. You know, some kids, some dudes are friends with their dads. I wouldn't say I'm friends with my dad. It's only growing up that I started realizing, like, my dad is a cool dude. Like, my dad is funny. He tells stories all the time. Like, you got to be funny to be cheating like that. Too. Right, right. He's, he's charming. Just, he's charming. He yeah, had to talk somebody yeah. out of some pussy, right? Exactly. So, like, growing, you just get to see it. Because... Caribbean kids, I don't know if it's immigrant kids in general, but I mean, I don't even want to speak for Caribbeans. I'd say in my family, the parents were parents. Yep. They yeah, weren't yeah. like Absolutely. people, your friends, whatever. They yeah. were your parents. That's what it is. You well, you know what, that too? Way. That's because... Let me forever to learn my as, mama first name. Uh, <laughs> for real? God yeah, damn. Oh, but my mama name is Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, your name is Dad. Nigga, I ain't never know their name. Yeah. It's in- it's interesting because when you look at the generations away f- away from like with African Americans, it's it's sort of like generations from from slavery, like from mm-hmm. from the emancipation and that those generations. So like the first generation of of any immigrant, they don't give a fuck about your self fulfillment or your happiness. It's get an education, be a doctor. The next generation is usually fuck ups because they start to be. The people they the, the like your kids are you get people who are inequipped to kind of set those boundaries and still maintain maintain what was good from the old stuff and still have somebody where they can be balanced enough to have some self actualization or some kind of happiness. But mm-hmm. I think the third generation 
it just keeps getting worse. It gets further away from and it evolves into this other thing where fundamentally truth and credibility and, 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 and stuff like empathy and stuff is not everything is so social media. Like I was counseling, I do, you know, relationship counseling. I was counseling a dude and this dude is like a, he's a really popular social media dude. He breaks artists with his social media marketing. And he's with some chick, and the first thing he does when they, they have a fight is he blocks her on the Instagram. And I'm like, you, you, you know that this is fake. Like, you take these images and put them together to present for certain people and certain clients. You know it's fake, but still, you, I go, why are you blocking her? He says, because I don't want to see what she's doing. To but you know that's fake. Like, everybody's not on a yacht. You know what I'm saying? Right, and if you are on a yacht, a lot of times you ain't paying your rent. You know what I mean? It, it's we got comics, grown ass men who are on TV shows who have got three roommates. You know, they living in a room and they're on TV. Not to yeah. mention the number of people who owe you money <laughs> that you see on TV that you'd never suspect owe you money. Yeah, or borrow I think, money. I think the the illusion of social media is something that our generation is gonna have to we'll need a couple of years just to get over that shit. Like what it created for us as a people, it's almost like it changed, I don't want to say human nature, but it definitely changed human behavior. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Like if I'm... More fronting. It's, just a, it's a better way to front. It's a, it's a digitized way to front. Well, statistically, fronting has gone up in the last uh, five mm, years. If you look at the numbers, it's, it's gone quarter. up 500%. I mean, some dudes, some dudes flash wads of money and talk about Frazier, and some dudes don't. <laughs> also, play a hate. But then you got to live with yourself. When you get off Instagram, you still got to live with yourself. To right, me, that's, 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 what, that's that disconnect. That's the, I think that's also why there is this this over exaggeration because the accolade you're supposed to get from that is is needs to match the 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 shit you feel inside. And so you it's, feel it's, the, you get depressed. Yeah, if it doesn't you know what match. I was thinking about when you was talking about the people having all these shows but also being fucked with money. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of them tie that same shit with the Instagram and all that because they're like they get some cash. And they immediately fuck it off trying to flaunt for Instagram. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. They could have they could have sustained themselves and, you know, had a, a normal adult. Put it together. Right, 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 right. Yeah. They keep trying you to You gotta be suck. smart with the money and it, but yeah. if you if you emotionally you're you you know, like I always say gratification and, and validation is like a, a saloon door. You gotta it swings both ways. So when people love you, you feel great. But as soon as everybody thinks you suck, you suck. You've given the power away to define what define who you are because you're defined by the accolades of other people. And right. and you don't ever wanna give that that's where you give that power up. So if somebody says, Man, you you you're you're like even the compliment you give me is, mm -hmm. man, you know, that's nice. I feel good that that, that I'm I've made a difference and you see a difference and mm -hmm. you recognize that and it's respectful. And it's also a dude who I'm digging your art too, but I got to go through that checklist to go. Is this like, is this motherfucker just stroking my ego? And right. I'm not bullshitting you because I'm on your show. Could it right, be? Right, 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 right. Um, but, the, but I think, but I, you know, people are like, oh, you changed my life. I, I'll be like, oh man, thanks man. That's, that was my intention. You know, go ahead, huh? No, no, I was just going to ask TJ before we uh, wrap up the show in a little bit. Uh, if you ever, I want to ask all the guests if they ever got got. Have you ever had a situation, TJ, where uh, a girl really broke your heart? You know what I mean? Early on, like you got had. Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, if you're going to live life with an open heart, your heart is going to get broken. I love love. Mm. I love falling in love with a girl. I love that part. That's that shit makes you feel alive, man. You feel but like only for three months. Only for yeah, three months. Yeah, that's it. That's it. For three months, I like to feel like a little boy. I get excited when I see you. I fucking love being around you, and then it it dies. And the yeah. key, I'm trying to find a way to sustain it without, you know, love. The feeling of being in love is not sustainable. But love, the act of love, which is the, the verb, the action of committing yeah. to someone and being with them, that's work. That's that work. I want to like, move from that feeling to 
learning how to make here's, here's something here's something that I'm I've been, I've been thinking about a while. It's mm -hmm. you know how comics will be about around them around each other, and they'll just it could be a random five comics that don't even really know each other or just know kind of about each other. And you'll have that moment where we'll just be laughing and joking and, and it'll be playful and it'll be like the best night ever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Civilians don't even understand that comics have that shit three, four times a week. Like we'll have moments like that three, four. With, so what I was, but that's, that's that same feeling of love. It's that openness, the playfulness. And I think when you take that playfulness and that openness and let yourself be childlike, that doesn't mean take no shit from nobody. It doesn't mean don't let nobody, but in the context of a respectful manner to play like children, because that's what we do. We yeah. verbally play like children, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, it is, it's, it, it, that helps the, 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 the relationship get back to that, that kind of loving feeling. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it yeah. gets you back there. Cause we do it all the time. You want to, Harry, real quick, you want to stop it here and then. No, not yet. We're still got some time, but we've got like another 10 minutes before we, we go to the Patreon exclusive. <laughs> okay. We've okay. got a little bit of time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, teach, you love being in love. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm I have that sort of same feeling. Like I do love the goofy stuff that comes with love. What's the goofiest shit you ever did? Like in the name of love that you can recall. <laughs> I see the smile okay. on your face. Well, one time I was in love with this girl, but it hadn't moved to like a thing yet. I didn't know how she felt about me. I just knew I fucking loved her. She was Ethiopian. They, they have a very specific kind of beauty that I'm really into. Big and answer, it's very sharp. It's yeah. Very yeah. Yeah. Be, yeah. Yeah. And uh, they're, point, they're mad pointy. Their face is pointy. You know what she, I mean? It, it point. She have, they have a round face and a long neck. It's, yeah. it's a very like Eastern African thing. So I'm in love with this girl, right? We, we had oh. met maybe a couple weeks before. We hadn't even been on the first date yet. And we were going to go on the first date. And she hit me up the day of the date to tell me that the night before she lost her phone and she's Facebook messaging me on her computer. And she's like, my phone is lost. I'm sorry. I have to cancel today, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, well, uh, let me try to call and figure stuff out. See if I can help with that. I fucking called nonstop for like the next three hours until I found the dude and I went and met him in Soho. She lost the phone in a cab and that dude had the phone. Uh -huh. like I could be risking some shit. I don't know who the fuck that <laughs> dude was, but I met with him and he gave me the phone and I felt like a motherfucking hero. And I hit up the girl on Facebook. We got together. I gave her the phone. But me in my dumb that young lover brain, I thought <laughs> that was gonna be what the seemed. thing. Yeah, yeah. But we still didn't become a thing. Movies, man. Yeah. <laughs> now you know, you know what's crazy. That, here's a here's a principle that I've learned throughout years: is you don't build love by what you give. It's what it's by what people give you. People fall in love with you because you you ask them for things and you have them do things for you because you give them purpose in their life, whether you realize it or not. You got to like, expound I, on that a little bit because it, it, you could, somebody could take that and yeah, go, yeah, uh, I'm with you yo, there. Yeah, yo, talk bitch, about give it, me a glass it's, of water. It's a deep way of thinking. Let's hear Go it. get me some shit. Go get my shoes. It's not so, going to make me <laughs> fall in love with you. Well, but the thing is this, like I had, I had, a, I had a girl who would like my, my, I'm older, so the hair in my ears start growing. And so she would like, oh my God, look at you. It's like, oh my God, you're a mess. I, if I don't do this, I, I, how's it ever going to get done? Like, I got to keep your ears clean. Like, I, I, and she would, like, if I shaved them myself, she, you could see disappointment in her because of the fact that you it, took it away from her. That became her thing for, to do for you. Okay, I but feel it's, you. But it's in any way, it's, if you think about, um, a person that you're doing things for, if you're trying to save somebody, you're trying to just think about how much more in love you were with her going through this process, meeting up with this guy, calling her up on Facebook and that excitement you feel is like, you know, like, of course, you're expecting a specific response. But the point is not getting that response even makes you want to do more. 
So yeah. it it, yeah. it compounds your the intensity of your your crush because you're doing for her, and it, and then because you're doing for her, it's almost like you're turning her off because you're too available. Yes, that's exactly what it was. I was because when someone loves you or likes you. Mm -hmm. they like you as you are like i i don't think attraction is a choice that can be moved by like action like me getting the phone was never gonna get her to like me if she didn't like me in the first place well but the thing is you didn't like you do you know what i mean like you're 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 you're, you're chasing something that you don't really think you're valuable enough to have that's why you're chasing it. The intention, okay. you wouldn't chase it if it wasn't running from you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. So, it, so the only things that run from you is the things that you desire, not the thing that's running away from you because it doesn't desire you. Yeah. So, so the dynamic of that intensifies the attraction on a different level because you're, somebody's always just out of reach. And then being out of out of reach, kind of. So now it becomes not just the attraction that you had, the energy that you put in it, but it's also psychological about the thing. It becomes more about this thing beating me. This thing just, you know, like a mouse. You just your string on a cat. You just keep it out of range. And what what really is happening is your energy of all that you're giving is pushing her away. So you're trying to reach and you're pushing her away and, and with the wind of, of you reaching out. So if you think That's about- That's a really how, good way to look at it. I agree. I yeah, agree. If, if you think about how that affected you, you can also, the, 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 like everything, had, if you flip it to the other side, is what was her response to that? Because if the shoe was on the other foot, your response would be the same. If she was overly, uh, overly aggressive and overly accessible, and uh, it didn't matter whether you there wasn't there, he, I want you. Here's your phone, and I then you know, look what I did for you. And uh, uh, it, it, none of that is attractive because yes. what what are you really what? is saying is you're better than me. And that's a pattern that I've recognized in my life, and I'm growing away from that. The pattern really is. I want a lot of people who don't want me. And then there's a bunch of people who want me and I don't give a fuck about them. Right. You think that's true? And it's a connected? really unhealthy way to look to like live and try to process love and stuff. But do you know why that is? It's just a human thing. The, 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 the thing that you, the, the thing that's elusive to you is always the thing that you want. Unfortunately. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, you may have a specific attraction or something, but an attraction is just a variable. It's not all the variables. You know, yeah. there's people that you, you know, look, if you got, if you're marrying, if you're getting ready to date a Victoria's Secrets model, right? The chick from Brazil and you, and you, uh, and, 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 and she ends up sucking your dad's dick. It doesn't matter how pretty she is. You know, because it's, it's, so it's not conditional. You know what I mean? She yeah. looks really ugly if she's blowing your dad, if you know that right. she's your right. dad. Yeah. And so they're all variables, looks, intelligence, all of that is variables, but it's variables. It, there's some of the variables. We, me and Harry had talked about that all the time. Like Harry was always worried about his weight. Now Harry lost 50 pounds already. So, and he's, Congrats, man. Man. That's dope. he's dropping Thank like you. crazy, but the but point I was doing was, fine before the 50. I learned all my stuff even before the weight, and it wasn't the weight that it made like, it. It's made it easier. It's made life feet. easier. What did you say, Andre? He's like, you was out here getting them bitches before the 50. Absolutely. That's true. But, but, he, but anytime there was an obstacle that he couldn't breach. Yeah, I'd focus on that. He would lean follow on that. my weight. Yeah. You know, everything was my weight, my weight, my weight. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but there's, but it's. And it's, that was it's, some it's, of it, but that wasn't all of the problems I had. It wasn't all yeah, like it. it is a variable. But the point was the fact that we when you meet a woman, she doesn't know you. Yes. You, how, how old are you, TJ? I'm, I'm going to be 32 in just a few weeks. Yeah. So, you know, you for 32 years, mm -hmm. this woman meets you in a minuscule of time of that. Right. And then. So how does she know who you are? You got to tell her. Right. 
you tell her with your posture, your tone of voice, the cadence of your voice, how you say, your gestures, what comes out of your mouth, what doesn't come out of your mouth, your looks, all of those things are the things you're telling her who she, who you are. Mm -hmm. And if you're insecure about a particular thing of yourself, then you put, you tell her this, I'm not good at this. Whether or not you say it outright, you're, you're, you're always hiding that. Yeah, and that yeah. and that that hiding this becomes almost deceptive and deceptive reads as unsafe and unsafe reads as unattractive so it it happens in these really quick ways where it goes runs from one thought to the next but the but the minute you start when you when you present yourself and understand what your value is mm -hmm. you're basically telling yo I'm a bad motherfucker yeah and she's yeah. going to assess that in its entirety and go, yeah, I'm attractive. I'm attracted to you. Not, not even if you're not physically what she wants, because we always, we always bring back the Victoria's Secrets model sucking your dad's dick, right? Why so do it's we always all bring that up, Dante? That seems very <laughs> specific that we... I usually don't say it about TJ's dad, but continue. he cheats. Yeah. So I figured I would, it was good it's, enough. It's highly plausible. <laughs> yeah. Is that a story that happened to someone and we just use it as an example? Whose father has got his dick sucked by, you know, who, who, who that that happened to? Well, the, the ex explanation to me it comes from the depths of my own fear. It's like that would be the worst thing in the world that if I was dating a chick and then she just was like blowing my dad. That's interesting. Why is that? That, that says a lot about you. On Absolutely. The his like, dad why was not your best guy. friend? Why not your best friend, but your dad? Why is, why is your dad any, your ultimate rival? His dad, his best friends didn't have any shit and shit as far as game, but his dad had game. That's why. And my father, was a, my father was my ultimate rival. Yeah. Uh, was, and his father would do anything to win that battle. And he, he, he went and down actually, swinging. He, he did, right? Didn't he? Uh, he did a little fucking Oklahoma grab ass on his way out. Uh, oh later yeah, years. yeah, yeah. yeah. Grab my, yeah, grab my wife. Sat, my wife stopped. My, my first wife stopped coming around because my, she, my father used to touch her on a, in a rubber shoulders and stuff like Holy that. Shit. But I knew. But it's funny when, I, when she told me that, I said, I said it to my, I said to my wife, like, why wouldn't you tell me that? And she goes, I didn't think you would believe it. And then I, it thought about it, and I called all of the ex girlfriends that I had. And every last one of them had said that they, my pops had kind of cracked that if they were around at any period of time. So he was always that, always trying to, the competition, you know, but, but my pops was five, two, he was the youngest boy of 16, right? His, uh, you know, he grew up during Jim Crow. He had rickets. Like, I mean, you know, we're, Yo, we're man, talking about real. Low, you're getting low on the list of excuses for grabbing ass. You, hey, <laughs> I have arthritis. Yeah, what do you expect scurvy. me to do? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and he was, and dad he was, was a pirate, and, nigga. Yeah. And he was, <laughs> you a lime, motherfucker. Don't he grab was, my he, he would have been a limey if he was a pirate. So they, they, um, but he, he, he was always that. The comp so because he had that Napoleon complex and he wanted to always be, so he was always, he was always driven by audiences. Anytime somebody was watching, and don't get me wrong, he would do extraordinary things during the audiences, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Um, but if there was no audience, he would he would yeah. keep it moving. Like even to the point, I think, like if there was a if there was a house on fire and there was a baby screaming in the, in the if there was no audience, I, I believe he would. Keep it moving, bro. If your out of dad fear. had an iPhone, he would be the type of nigga to turn on live before he do oh, yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. He, it sounds like your dad would, would be an influencer if he was today. If he would be killing. Well, he him. was. They they yeah, they influence. made it. They named the street after him. Oh wow! Brooke, cool. Yeah, yeah. He's named the street and a park. But the I, thing how'd was, you get along with him? We had a really it was rough. It was rough. Okay. Um, because he, I, 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 I thank God for the things that he taught me in terms of like to keep your word, that your word is your bond and to tell the truth and don't be a liar. And, you know, um, um, don't be, a, you know, be, a, don't be a coward. He would, even though he put a lot of fear into me, it was, it was, he was a representation of a really strong man who provided for his family and those basic fundamental rules were like, like truth and credibility. Right. Those right. things were, were instilled in me. 
but he violated a lot of them. And I became a situation where I was his police on, I was, yo, didn't you say da 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 And then it became- would call him out on his own bullshit with wisdom that he gave me. <laughs> right, and then he would go, you know what? I can go hang out at the park with these kids that ain't got no father. And they'll love me. I don't. I, I don't have to deal with this. I can find some fake kids. Fuck you. I, I don't okay. need. You. And that's what he did. I mean, hundreds of thousands of fake kids. Like he. That's what he did. Youth work. He did tournaments and youth work and and all kinds of nonprofit. And that all must be hurtful for a real son to watch your father do. Yeah, it was. It was hurtful. But you. But you know, you got to get to the point where, like I, like I think about my dad grew up in Jim Crow during Jim Crow. Like, you know what I'm saying? We're talking about, we, we, we talking about this Black Lives Matter shit. That shit back there, mm -hmm. that's, that's before Emmett Till. So yeah. you tell me what the fuck, blackface, nigga, whatever, all of that was. So in the context of that, how could I possibly expect him to have a handle on his self-actualization, what he was or what he, where he was really just, a, he was affected by being a small man in stature and so he was his personality was so big to and so it just i believed the hype and then i was like yeah you told me such and such and such because that's credibility right that's that's what he taught me so i couldn't do any different yeah it's kind of that thing of never meeting your heroes in some yeah. way your dad was your hero and then you got to see him for who he really is yeah and for the flaws and stuff but you yeah you forgive and, and and i think i always say that i'm the best of him and i left the worst of him beautiful you know man. the work is I, done. you know i don't i don't give a fuck like i really don't give a fuck with nobody i don't care if there's an audience if it's not an audience don't, I'm doing, I, I stay true to that. Maybe over, maybe sometimes I overdo that. And I think as I'm older, I'm, that's balancing mm -hmm. more. But um, also, what were your last words when you were there with him at the uh, empty hospital room? <laughs> if I, if I could recall that uh, memory. I told him he was, I had to go identify the body and I went in the room. He was sitting there. He was like dead in his arms. And I was like, who won now, nigga? I won. Bang. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, it was weird because it was right next to the it. nurse too. He wasn't even alone. That was the weird part. They had a bunch of doctors in there. And I he spiked this. I spiked this bedpan. So, <laughs> yeah, he started doing the icky fucking shoes with that one. He started doing the icky shuffle. It was really uncomfortable. <laughs> it was, That's crazy. It was That's terrible. Wild. But it with was. That, but you know. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, I was I was gonna wrap up with that uh, yeah, for wrap. for the regular show. We're gonna we're gonna continue over a Patreon. Uh, with a little bit more with TJ and maybe some more awful dad stories from Dante and myself <laughs> and Andre as well. Uh, but thank you to everyone for joining the show. Again, if you want to join us over at Patreon, you could join us at patreon.com slash manschool202 and also check out this episode and all the episodes on uh, YouTube if you want to see the visual, visuals rather, and you want to see what latest background uh, Andre has decided to put up. This one is uh, very poetic. It's him smoking weed. Very creative, original. Offering, I never thought it. I'm you don't, oh, offering, you know what? You don't there see that a lot. You don't see that a lot. He's a giver, that one. I'm a giver. Good guy. <laughs> but it's in black and white, so this is not a drug addict. It's classy. See, that's the difference. That's it's the avant-garde. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Dre, go ahead. Talk your shit. Andre D. Thompson on all things between spots. Type Andre D. Thompson in your search engine. That shit work. Um, TJ, please to get, pl plug the album, everything, and the social media. Uh, uh, you can find me on everything, pretty much at TJ Stand Up on Twitter and Instagram. That's what I use the most. And uh, my special January third is currently available on Prime Video and Apple TV. You can rent and purchase it and enjoy it. It's a good show. I'm real proud to share it with y'all, and I hope you watch it. And also, uh, before we forget, uh, please join us over at Instagram. Uh, Real Man School 202 at Real Man School 202. We're doing a bunch of clips. We're doing. Uh, we're supposed to be doing some live stuff soon, and uh, you know whatever happens, that's where it will be. So beautiful. Okay, let me. Uh, uh, Gybb, get your balls back. WWDD. What would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all. If you need the one-on-one -on -one consultations, DanteNero.com. If not, just Google me. You know how to get me. I love y'all. We are out. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero. 
hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson. Produced by Harry Turjanian. Executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero. 